Well, our journey's just begun with parenting, but our adoption journey's over. It was a long haul. We just recently uh, adopted our little girl from Guatemala. She's been home with us now for two weeks, and we're adjusting to life as new parents. We just love her to bits and pieces. All in all, we, we found out about her November the 1st, 2006, and uh, we picked her up um, October forever, the 4th. Uh, October the 4th, 2007. The overall belief of people working in the field of international adoption is that children deserve to have permanent loving families. I think that most of us agree that that can best be served with their family of origin, with their birth family, but that's not always possible. If that's not possible, I think that we also would like to see children adopted within their own country. But again, that's not always possible. From infancy, there's not a lot of children in the United States to adopt. There's much, it's a much easier process to go internationally. In choosing the country to do it from was, uh, Guatemala was a, it was a Catholic country and the babies would be very young when they come home. Guatemala is the most expensive country fee out there. Mm -hmm. It was just a little over $20,000 I think. Guatemala is unique in that there is no funding for children who are awaiting adoption. So when a child goes into foster care, the cost of that foster care, the cost of all their medical needs, the cost of all their food is paid for by the adoptive parent through the adoption process. And there um, is no profiting. I mean, the birth yeah. moms are not paid or anything like that. So there's really no, unless there's, you know, I guess. And, unless there's shady dealings with attorneys and things like that down there. But, you know, that's a whole other, you know, I guess it's all purely speculation. <laughs> There's been a lot of discussion about Guatemala and standards of practice. Clearly, we need to have a better understanding of how fees work. But I don't believe that there is any clear indication that children are being bought and that birth parents are being paid off to place their children for adoption. It's never acceptable for a child to be bought. His name was Miguel. He was, um, this was December 2nd. Um, I forget what he weighed. But he was, a, right. you know, by all accounts, healthy fine child. We had gotten his DNA, we had gotten the uh, family court approval, we had gotten pre-approval from the United States, we were in PGN, which is kind of, the best way I can describe it, it's kind of like the Attorney General's office here in the United States. And we received a call, um, I don't remember the exact date, but it was Easter week. Yeah, it was in, it was in April. Actually, I, I got the call, I think, from, I was, I was on a trip for work, um, and I excused myself from the management meeting. I thought it was going to be good news from our agency. and. Uh, so one of the social workers told us that uh, Miguel had died of crib death. Well, it was uh, it was crippling for me, and I it was probably ten times so for for Judy when we found out about Miguel. You know, this there was a reason why we chose to adopt from Guatemala, and that we had to believe that that was like you know just this horrible thing, but we needed to go on. Eventually, about a week later, we made the decision to take another referral. Mm -hmm. uh, with our agencies, you know, our agencies help. Guatemala adoptions to the United States will probably cease sometime in early 2008. You know, with the Hague, things in Guatemala um, have become very complex and complicated as far as international adoption is concerned. It's a very controversial, political, uh, confusing issue. The Hague Convention on Intercountry Adoption is a multilateral treaty that is intended to uphold the best interest of children in intercountry adoption. It prohibits things like child buying and child trafficking. It requires transparency of fees. It looks at the qualifications and ethical practice of adoption practitioners. It seems that they're, in a sense, kind of, uh, no pun intended here, but they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater in some of it because there's some good things about adoption in Guatemala that I don't even think they're considering and it's going to make a major impact on their economy. Uh, it's going to make a major impact major. on the kids. I mean, what are, the, what are all these kids going to do? Are they, I mean, where are these orphanages and, and, and is the money really going to get to the orphanages? I think that's the biggest question. It's totally understandable and respectable that the governments uh, want their own people to want to raise these children. Um, and want to keep them in their culture and want to offer them a life in their country. And I totally agree with that. But if they can't... Guatemala is an extremely poor country. It has a large percent of their, uh, percentage of their children who are living in chronic malnutrition. Many, many children who don't benefit from, the educa from education. As an adoptive parent, I see it as a very selfless 
decision on their mom because on the part of the mother that um, perhaps she is so poor and, and just simply doesn't have the ability to raise that child and um, so she selflessly says I can't do this but I, I love you so much that I want you to have a better life. It's clear that there needs to be considerable reform in adoptions in Guatemala but I strongly believe that those interested um, and those practicing adoption in Guatemala are interested in the best interest of the children and in having standards and ethical practice that are compliant with the Hague. There's going to be a lot of kids lost in the meantime, you know, until they get their their system in place. We want our, you know, we wanted Miguel to come home, we want Liliana to come home as, as soon as possible. and. Uh, you know, it's, just a, it's a very long process to go through, and it's very difficult to know that there's this the Hague Convention, there's a kind of a December 31st deadline, and um, we want our baby home before that happens. We, and we feel like there's a big risk that she might not come.